I think we'll start this out with the example. Hang on, the hell we're changing. Another design, like, I, it's just out of words, folks. Um, sometimes these things get a little intense. Um, changing criterion designs. Establish a baseline and change the criteria. You're done. No, you're not done. Change the criteria one more time. And again. <laughs> All right, that's enough joking around. All right. Um, so it, it, it's kind of true, though. <laughs> it's just... Establish a baseline, change the criteria, and reach it, and then change the criteria again, and reach it, and change the criteria again, reach it. Um, so that's it. I, I don't know what to tell you. These things are super simple. They're super cool. Um, so you're going along, you establish your baseline, you figure out where the behavior is currently at, um, then you establish a reasonably achievable criteria. If the person's smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, can you please not ask them to go to zero? It's not going to work. You're going to fail. All right. Um, these are steps. They're achievable steps. You need to be able to get the person to those steps and you need to be responsive and you'd be able to change your criteria if they're not reaching your steps, okay? So let's say we got somebody smoking 40 cigarettes a day and we think that maybe it's realistic to go to 35. So we get them to 35, they're hyper successful, they're doing great, they, they meet their three out of five criteria or whatever it is, um, so, so I should probably back up. For each criterion, right? You set, for, for each level, you need to set a criterion. It's not just once. You need to kind of capture your stability there, right? So you say, okay, I'm going to get you to 35 cigarettes. Well, I want you to do it on three out of five measurement days. Once you achieve that, we'll change the criteria again. You see how that works, right? Um, so then you, so you made my criterion three out of five days. Awesome. Or three out of five trials, whatever you, however you want to put it. Then we can lower it down to 33 cigarettes. That's a pretty small jump. But let's say we try something different. We go, you're achieving at 33. Now let's move you down to 23. Can you make that 10 cigarette jump? I don't know. The data will tell you though, because they probably won't be super successful at it. And if they're not successful at it, don't give up. Just change the criteria, put it back to where you think it should have been, right? So is something that's achievable, right? So if you were at 33 cigarettes and you jumped down to 23 and they couldn't achieve it, put it somewhere up here. Put it down to 37 or something like that. Uh, it was not 37. Oh my gosh, like 27 or something. It was, let's get them smoking more, Ryan. Great job. Yes, we're highly ethical around here at Psycho. Um, so, so move that uh, um, criteria based on the particular data that you have. Um, of course, we start out with a situation where where we think we know what's going to happen, um, and we set up those 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 criterion. Um, initially, uh, but you have to be responsive to it and be willing to change those based on the data that you're getting out of your clients. Um, so anyway, these, this kid was having these vocalizations in the classroom. They were wild. They were just like, ah, ooh, ah, and they made tons of crazy sounds. During baseline, she was performing an average of 400 of them in a one hour period. 400. All right. And so sometimes they were higher than that. Sometimes they were, they were lower. But after our baseline, we're like, yeah, that's a problem for the classroom. Maybe we can help you get that under control. Um, so we thought, you know what? This might be a reasonable to do a changing criterion design. So we started out with a changing criterion. And that kiddo, when we set that first criteria down to 350, the kiddo was awesome. She nailed it at 200. From 400 and something down to 200. And the first day of the intervention, we're like, let's go with that. <laughs> so we didn't bring our criteria back up. We then went from 200 down to 100, and I'll be darned if the kiddo didn't meet that criteria. And not only did they meet the criteria on the third, I mean, they, they nailed it. It was just so quick. On the third, on the second one, so we went from 400 down to 200. They didn't even intend to, that she was just at that level. Um, so then we set a new criteria down to 100, and within literally instantly, she got to the 100. In order, in order to get to our three out of five, we're like, we'll switch it again after they achieve three out of five days at that particular level. Uh-uh, the kiddo even went further. Day one was like like 95, 100 right in there. Day two was down to 70. Day three was down to 40. Day four, we're like, you've met criteria, but we're just going to let you keep going. And we just started re you know, dropping the appropriate reinforcers along the way, which is what she was earning. And that behavior went to zero in less than a week. Well, sorry basically less than a week if you think about intervention days. But it took about two weeks of total time in order to pull that off, went from 400 um, down down to zero. And the behavior maintained for the rest of the school year, it was really maintained by some weird type of access to, um, uh, to, to this. it was escape, 
all right? So think of it that way. So we just taught the child to escape, um, and it worked beautifully um, in escape in an appropriate fashion, which was asking for breaks, right? So as you might imagine. Um, person was completely functional. They just had these weird sounds, and it was really driving everybody in the classroom nuts. So that's an example of a changing criterion. The smoking one, you can go the other direction. You can go up, uh, writing words per day. I put myself on a changing criterion design when I was doing work a long time ago with um, increasing the amount of words that I produced each day. And I'm not talking about the type of words like this where I can talk faster and faster and faster. I'm talking about typing and being able to type quicker and quicker and producing more words for my journal articles and things like that that I was writing at the time and I think it was a book and we got done with the book really quickly. So, <laughs> uh, because we had a change in criterion design. So just some fun examples for you. Uh, there's lots of goods and lots of bads. You can probably conclude uh, what those are pretty easily. If not, go ahead and look them up or ask us a question. Maybe we'll go into another video about them. So, uh, there you go. So that's a uh, change in criterion design. I think that's all you need to know about those. Ladies and gentlemen, do you feel like your test scores are falling a little short? Join us for a Sitecore cram session.